it is time to get excited my guys because we are going to be talking about my anticipated releases for the rest of 2024. <laughs> So these are all of the books that I'm very much interested in that are released between July and December, so the whole second half of the year. I have posted an anticipated releases video at the beginning of the year. That one had like a lot of detail about releases from January to June, but obviously as the year goes on more releases are announced and so the second half of the year has a few more things that I'm interested in than it did when I made that original video. So the way my anticipated releases videos works is that I only share with you the books that I'm highly interested in. So the books that I have a high chance of actually buying or picking up and getting to at least sometime soon. So they are like genuinely anticipated releases. Anything that's like a debut or like book four in a series when I've only read book one will not be present in this video because I just feel like the chances of me, unless they come in a subscription box, actually picking those books up is already pretty slim. But the chances of me reading them anytime soon is pretty much non-existent. That being said, there are just a couple of books in here that I found that do seem kind of interesting to me. So the first book that I actually have on here is my only July release. It's for the 23rd of July, I believe, and it is Queen Bee by Juno Dawson. So this one is the prequel to the Her Majesty's Royal Coven series, which I really wish book three was coming out this year. But if we can't have book three, then I'm happy that I just get like a release in this series. But Her Majesty's Royal Coven is following a group of witches who were very close when they were children and even though they've grown up and gone their separate ways they still keep in touch. So Helena who is the high priestess of Her Majesty's Royal Coven which is like the government body of witches has found a child that she believes fulfills a prophecy. The prophecy is that the sullied child is going to come and bring about the end of days. So when she thinks that she has this child in custody she contacts her friend Neve, who she believes will be able to rehabilitate this child, stop them becoming the sullied child from the prophecy and avert the apocalypse. I really love this series. I love that it's set in Northern England. I love that we have like a rich backstory that is like a conflict between witches and warlocks that happened before the start of this series that is heavily influencing the gender roles within the magical community in present day and all of the discussions that we have about things like gender and race and sexuality on the background of like a really decent magical plot as well. Every book in this series as well ends on a massive cliffhanger and it is so painful which is why I want book three so bad but I'm also interested in Queen Bee because this is assumedly <laughs> about the creation of Her Majesty's Royal Coven which was originally created by Anne Boleyn. I do have a fairy loot edition of books one and two as well so I'm assuming that I either ordered a fairy loot edition or I will be ordering a fairy loot edition of this at some point in the future. So the next one is our first of two releases on the 10th of September and that is The Ending Fire by Sarah L. Arifi. So this one is the final book in the Ending Fire trilogy which is a fantasy series that I have fallen in love with. We are following three people each representing a different blood colour in this community that is separated by the colour of people's bloods. So before the story started, I think it's around 20 years before the start of the story, there was a movement from a rebellion group where they went into the homes of red-blooded people who formed the nobility of this world and they swapped a lot of red-blooded babies with blue-blooded replacements. The reason they did this is so that they could take the red-blooded children and teach them the oppression that is faced by the people with the blue and the translucent blood and eventually train them to take part in a competition that chooses the next leaders of the world. So eventually they will be able to overthrow this oppressive regime that the blue and the translucent blooded people are living under. So I'm really excited for book three. This is one of the best new fantasy series that I've read and I love it so much. And each book, like book two, really expanded upon the foundations of book one. So I'm really hoping that book three does a very good job of tying it together. Our other 10th of September release is Somewhere Beyond the Sea by T.J. Clune. This one is a companion novel to The House in the house on the house in the cerulean sea which is a book i read a few years ago and i really really enjoyed i don't necessarily think that this needs a companion novel but i think that it follows the other 
main male character, the other male adult in the first book. So I'm interested. I'm hoping that I love it as much as I love The House in the Cerulean Sea, but I don't, when books are marketed as standalones, I don't like them to have more books in the series just because I feel like it, if it wraps up in a way where I really loved it, it was satisfactory. You wonder why there's need for it, but I do think that this will be an interesting story from TJ Clune. September is a hot month for releases because I have two on the 12th, I think, as well. I have gotten all of these dates from Goodreads as well, so if any of them are inaccurate, they're inaccurate on Goodreads, and I know that for some books they have different UK and US release dates, so I do potentially have the US release date here instead of the UK one, but one of my most anticipated releases of the year is The Republic of Salt by Ariel Kaplan. So this one is the second book in a series that blends like Jewish folklore with a like medieval Spanish setting and it is set at a time when Christianity was kind of taking over Europe and the Jewish people of this inspired Spanish-esque setting are all asked to leave. They can either convert to Christianity or they can leave the city. So our two main characters join a caravan. We have a male and a female character. The female character can speak but she can't show and she can walk but she can't run. So as this caravan is moving she's falling further and further behind and our male main character notices when somebody like a strange character up to no good takes interest in her and starts to guide her away from the road. So our male main character follows her and sees her go through a pomegranate gate in the forest into another dimension. This book reminded me a lot of like The Bear and the Nightingale and City of Brass and I really fell in love with it. It's not a fantasy romance but it does have romantic elements. It also is inspired by the real historical events that were happening in medieval Spain and we also have this um, folklore coming through to provide the magic and I just thought it worked perfectly. So I'm really excited for book two to come out later this year. The next one is one that Solaris have asked if I would like to receive an arc of which is why it has made this list and that one is Goss by Sam K Horton. This is the first book in the Aethin, Aethin legacy and it has been like the way that it was presented in the press release is that it is the Bear and the Nightingale meets Poldark which I'm intrigued about the Bear and the Nightingale aspect Paul Dark a little less so. This one is also something that I do really enjoy. It's the same with The Pomegranate Gate and also with The Bear and the Nightingale. It is a story of folklore versus faith. So this one is actually set in England in Cornwall and I'm assuming that it's going to be about Christianity. I think it's set in the, yeah, the 1700s and it's also about the folklore of the land, which for the UK is very much things like Fae. So I'm excited to see how it plays out. I can't promise I'm gonna love this one because I've never read anything from Sam K. Hall before they may actually are they they're a debut author but I am open to giving it a go because it sounds like something that I could potentially enjoy. One that I'm currently undecided about is released on the 17th of September and that is The Butcher Game by Elena Urquhart. So this is the sequel to The Butcher and the Wren which I read was it last year or the year before when it was released but the reason why I picked it up because this is like a thriller slash horror which isn't my typical genre. I read a few but not a lot but the reason I picked it up is because the author is one of the hosts of the only well, actually I listened to two podcasts, but one I only listened to to pass the time until the episodes of my favorite one are released. So this is one of the hosts of my favorite podcast, which is Morbid. And so I wanted to support Elena last year. I read The Butcher and the Wren. I enjoyed it. I don't know if it's the kind of thing that I'm gonna keep up with. It feels like a lot of crime or thriller series where if you're reading them when they're published, like you can kind of keep up with them, but it's not something if there were 10 books released in this series, I would not be picking up that series right now, if that makes sense. This one is, I'm gonna give you very few details on it because it has a twist and because I know the twist, I don't know how much now is spoilers, like thinking about it in hindsight, but we're following a woman who is like a forensics, person and she is hunting a serial killer. She is collecting information on this killer based on the victims that he leaves behind. And then on the flip side of that, we are following a serial killer who is stalking the forensics investigator lady. So it is two perspectives alternating and the perspective of the murderer is actually quite creepy, and very unsettling. But then it also on the flip side of that, it has more of like a crime detective edge because she is actively hunting down the killer. And I think that's what I didn't love about it quite as much. So I actually have this down as the 12th of September, but then Goodreads says that it's the 10th of September. I've also seen it down as released in June. So I don't know when this is released, but 
it's going to be in the second half of this year fingers crossed because i've waited a long time for it and that is silverborn by jessica townsend so this is the fourth book in the nevermore series which is a middle grade series that i absolutely adore i think it's one of those middle grade series that has things that adults can be interested in as well and it's just like a really rich magical world but we're following a girl called morrigan crow who is a cursed child and approaching like her 10th or 11th birthday because she's a cursed child she's going to die so she attends the town's bidding day which is where like business owners not bid but they approach children like to take them into apprenticeships and morrigan knows that she's not going to have any bids because she's going to die and this guy called jupiter north actually does put in a bid for her and he whisks her away to the magical world of nevermore where he enrolls her into the one sock society no it's called one sock it's the wondrous society which is essentially a magic school my favorite thing about this is the world and i'm really excited to see the start of the next story arc it's just so magical and it takes me to like a mushy gooey place that I don't often get to go to so I'm really excited to have this one in my hands. So for the 24th of September I do have an outlier here this is one that when I was making this video the title immediately caught my eye and I was like okay this sounds interesting to me and that is The Hitchcock Hotel by Stephanie Rober. So this one is a thriller and it is about a man who owns a Hitchcock themed hotel and he invites a bunch of like film experts or critics or students or something to the hotel but he has an agenda. So I am a big Hitchcock fan. I love Hitchcock movies. I used to watch them with my mum when I was younger. And I also did film studies when I was in college. And a lot of our work was like looking at Hitchcock and really diving into his directorial style. So this does sound really interesting to me, but it is typically because it's a thriller. It's a little bit outside of my typical genre. But if I do manage to stumble across this one, I do think I'm going to pick it up and give it a go. And because it's like a thriller, I don't know if it's a thriller or a horror, but my library does actually tend to stock like crime and thrillers really well so hopefully I'll be able to get it from there. So moving on to October I have two things in for the first. The first one is very much a maybe for me. I don't know very much about it and that one is Air by Sabah Tahir. Now I did read An Ember in the Ashes. I was late to the party. I only read it like two years ago in its entirety but I did enjoy it. The series definitely had low points. It's not a favourite but I had a good time and I do think that this is a very strong contender to be in at least one of the subscription boxes that I I get when October rolls around. So I do feel like there's a very good chance that I am going to get my hands on this regardless. But this, I, I don't know very much about it. I thought that Sabah here's new release would be interesting. I know that it's a fantasy. I know that the synopsis also says that it's romantic. I don't know whether that means it is a fantasy romance or whether romance is just like a significant part of the story. And I do also believe that it's multi-perspective. I don't think it has anything to do with like a Roman type society, like an Ember in the Ashes did but I'm really excited to see where Sabah Tahir goes from the point of like Ember in the Ashes into a new fantasy series. The other one for the 1st of October is Laura Olympus Volume 7 so I still have not currently bought Volume 6 but I'm hoping to pick up the Barnes and Noble edition when I go to San Diego in July but Volume 7 is also going to be released this year. This is a webcomic series that I really enjoy. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling but it also involves like all of the gods of Olympus and something that I really love about this series is that the relationship between Hades and Persephone is portrayed as being really wholesome which I mean it isn't in Greek mythology necessarily but in like the iterations of it being a retelling we all know what the vibes are of Hades and Persephone so their relationship is really wholesome but then the supporting cast of gods it doesn't necessarily shy away from the terrible things that gods do so there's a lot of like mention or depiction of sexual assault domestic abuse and like child abuse and things like that in here but at the same time like it really modernizes the story and makes the gods relatable and funny and I just find it to be super enjoyable. For the 8th of October I have one that I actually think has been pushed back because I'm pretty sure that I originally had this in for July and that is Bloodguard by Ceci Robson. So this is, is it Ceci or is it Cece? I don't know but this is one that I actually pre-ordered ages ago on a whim off Amazon because I noticed that it's by the same publisher as Fourth Wing and the first run has a really nice stenciled edge and we all know what happened with Fourth Wing so I was like cool I'm gonna pre-order this because it sounds good and then I will have the first run edition of this. So 
this one I know it's a fantasy romance I know that it is inspired by the Roman Empire which books inspired by the Roman Empire is my Roman Empire and it features like a gladiator style tournament a guy who has entered this to win coin to save his sister and I think our female main character is an elven royal literally all I know about it but I'm willing to give it a try for the 15th of October we have another one that I'm not too sure about so we'll see like when it's released like whether I actually get around to picking it up or whether I can potentially get it from my library but that one is The Wedding Witch by Erin Sterling which is the third book in the X-Hex series so the X-Hex is a witchy like fantasy romance following a woman who is a witch but she cursed her ex-boyfriend in college using a Bath and Body Works candle when she was drunk in the bath and she obviously thought nothing of it until he returns to Tyrone and everything starts to go a little bit wrong. I don't think that the X-Hex was groundbreaking but I really love it I think it delivered the perfect quick Halloween witchy romance and so I was really excited about the second book in that series but I ended up not really enjoying it and gave it two stars which is why I'm super ambivalent about book three. All I know about this one is that it is following the last remaining brother in the three magical brothers that like this series has followed and a woman who is not magical but she sells magical artifacts so she gets an invite to a wedding which I'm wondering if it's the wedding of one of the main characters from the previous books and she is hoping to steal an artifact to make enough money to retire and obviously the brother gets involved in this in some way. For the 22nd of October we have a surprising entry which is Absolution by Jeff Vandermeer. So this is book four in the Southern Reach trilogy, the first book being Annihilation. Now I read these books when I was very new to booktube, I'm gonna say 2018. 2019 and I loved them which is very strange for me because they are definitely a collection of books that leave a lot unresolved and they're very ambiguous which we all know I hate. So Annihilation is about I think it's the 12th expedition that is going into this mysterious location so it's like a, a bubble that's been put over an area and weird things are happening inside so they keep sending in expeditions to kind of figure out what it is that's going on in there but something different happens with every expedition so I think in one expedition they all end up ended up killing each other. One expedition like only one person came out and couldn't say anything that was going on and we are following the 12th expedition which I think is an expedition entirely of women that is going in to see what is happening in Area X. The second book then follows a different perspective from outside of Area X and book three kind of ties them together. So the synopsis of this one and I couldn't even explain it to you if I wanted to because the series is just so odd but it acknowledges in the synopsis that a lot of things were left open to interpretation and ambiguous with book three so I think it is going to try and tie that up a little bit and it's also told in four parts that's all I can tell you. I am hoping to get this from my library though because my only option is going to be to get it in hardback and I have paperback copies of the rest of the books. And then the final book that I'm anticipating for 2024 is released on the 6th of December. It's, do I have any November releases? Yeah, no, I have nothing for November and one for December, which is The Winds of Truth by Brandon Sanderson. So this one is of course the fifth book in the Stormlight Archive. I have not read book four yet, but I'm current currently trying to catch up. I was supposed to be reading a book every month and I would have been done just in time to read Winds of Truth in January, but now I'm like two months behind. <laughs> so we'll see when I get to this one, but I will still definitely be getting a copy book three in the Stormlight Archive is one of my favorite books of all time blew my mind but this one is and bear in mind that the synopsis that I'm going to give you is the setup point of the first book but it isn't necessarily what this series is actually about because we are following people associated with a war. The war is between humans and a race called the Parshendi and the reason why they're fighting is because the Parshendi side have like valuable resources that the human side want. That is how the war started but right at the beginning of book one we find out that there was a peace negotiation between the Parshendi and the humans and the Parshendi assassinated the human king. So this war effort is no more of a revenge thing and it's being headed up by the brother of the king Dalinar. So all of the perspectives that we follow at the beginning of this series are tied to this side of the war. So it's like the assistant to the daughter of the king and it is the son of of the general, the son of Dalinar, Dalinar himself, a guy called Kaladin who is a slave that moves 
the bridges that they need to use in the battle as this war is unfolding. So that is the setup for the plot, but it actually has a lot to do with like ancient and mysterious knights, magical weapons, um, little magical creatures. And as the series goes on, you learn more about the magic as the characters start to learn more about the magic and the story unfolds from there. Book five, I think, is the conclusion of this story arc. So I'm actually quite scared of it, especially because I don't even know what Rhythm of War has in store for me at this point. But I'm gonna put my big girl pants on at some point and catch up with this series so that I can experience the winds of truth with the rest of the world. So those are all of the books that I am anticipating for the second half of the year. I do not for one second believe that this is an exhaustive list and I'm pretty sure that some more exciting things will be coming up later on in the year. Like I know there's like the, is it the fifth, the sixth Discovery of Witches book is coming out but I'm only two books into that series. I know that the final Belladonna book is by Adeline Grace is coming out, but I've only read one. So there's exciting things like that coming out that like I'm just not quite up to yet. So this is probably by no means an exhaustive list, but down in the comments, let me know what book you are most excited about for the second half of the year, in case there's anything that's on your radar that isn't yet on mine. And if you would like to let me know that you've been here, but you don't really have anything to say, then put a little calendar emoji down in the comments instead. But aside from that guys, please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Etsy for that, and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today guys, bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no